Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make an air hockey table. First I cut down two sheets of eighth inch plywood. One of them was covered with melamine on one side. Then I cut down some one by sixes to the full length of the table. These are the 48 inches plus a goal on each end. So I marked where the goals went so I could line them up later. I cut two more pieces of 1x6 to box in the playable area, and then I went to the table saw. I lowered the blade and then I cut a slot in each one of the pieces, but on the long sides I didn't cut all the way to the end. You can see that I started these cuts with the end of the wood past the blade. I gently set it down on the blade while it was spinning and then pushed the wood through, but not all the way to the end. The end pieces, which are shorter, did get full cuts. I did a test fit with one panel to make sure that it would fit, and then I moved the fence over and ran all the boards through again. But this time I had to have a little bit thicker dado, so I had to move the blade over slightly, run them through again, and then repeat that process until it was the correct thickness. On both of the end panels, I measured in 6 inches from each side and drew a line between those marks. That gave me a 12 inch area centered in the middle of the board. I took it to the bandsaw and cut this section out on both pieces. I used my CNC machine to drill all the holes in the game board, but if you don't have one, you could just use a straight edge to draw a grid and drill them by hand. It would just take longer, but it would work exactly the same. To make the strikers or the paddles, I used a compass and drew a circle on a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. I also found the center point just by making two marks. I cut these out on the bandsaw and got close to the line but didn't actually try to hit it. Personally, I do a better job of hitting that line with a disc sander, so I took them both over there, spun the piece around while I got to the line. I also sanded off the raised lettering on the top of a PVC cap, and this is going to be the handle. Using the Forstner bit on the drill press, I made a recess for each one of these caps to sit down in. I did a little bit of fitting and then used some CA glue to hold them in place. Once I got it in place, I spun them around to make sure that the glue was fully spread, and they ended up holding really well. And then I gave both of these a coat of primer. I cut down some 3 quarter inch scrap pine into a bunch of small pieces of random sizes. I sanded these off so they just weren't rough, and then flipped over my game board and used some CA glue to place them randomly all over the board. The only conditions here were to make sure that they didn't cover any of the holes, and there was an area left in the center so I could add the plumbing later. I set the bottom panel in place and found the center point, and then from there, drew a circle around the plumbing that was going to be attached. Then I drew an inner circle to cut out. I put a backer board underneath a piece of wood to prevent blowout, and then drilled out the circle with a Forstner bit. I added some CA glue to the top of all of these pieces, and then used some really heavy stuff to hold it down to clamp it in place while it dried. The strikers then got a coat of blue paint. Back on the table saw, I put on my crosscut sled and then raised the blade to where it matched the thickness of this piece of plywood. I set up a stop block and then slowly chipped away the area that was going to be the goal on the end of one of these pieces. This worked perfectly well, but it also took a while, so the next time I tried moving the piece of wood barely into the blade, then sliding it across the blade, moving in it a little bit more and sliding it again. I just did this until the area was finally cut out. Only do this against a sled, take your time and do this at your own risk. I set the fence to the thickness of the area that I had just cut out, and then I ran my two end pieces through to cut them down to the same height. Then it was time to put all this together. I added some glue to all the dados on all four of the pieces, and then I had to put the tabletop in place. You can see here that the pieces of wood I used for the tabletop were not really straight. So it took a lot of work to get them fit into the dados from one end to the other, and then to get the other pieces put on. I kind of did them one at a time and then used some corner clamps to hold them in place at 90 degrees while I put on the rest of the pieces. This took way longer than I'm showing in the video, but it's just not that interesting to watch me fight it for a long time. The mallet really helped to knock these pieces into the dados in places where they didn't want to go in by hand. For each one of the joints, I pre-drilled some holes and drove in some screws to hold these together. The glue is going to do the work long term. I found that there was one section that didn't really catch in the dado, and I didn't want the air to leak out there or for it to be unsupported, so I took a scrap piece of pine and glued it in place. To make the tops for the goals, I ripped down two pieces of the 8th inch plywood and then marked them and cut them to length. These fit over the area that I chipped away earlier on the main frame. I added some glue to those areas that I'd cut away and then set these pieces in place. I just used some brad nails to hold them in while the glue dried. I measured the inside of the goal areas just to make sure that everything was the same and square, and then I cut down some pieces of scrap plywood and scrap pine to fit in these areas. I made one piece to go at the top so that the puck would hit it when it came in the goal, and another piece to go at the bottom to catch it when it fell. I added some glue and nailed these in with some brads, making sure that they were flush to all the outside edges. 
and then it was time to add the plumbing. I put a 90 degree elbow on a piece of PVC, held it over the hole that I had drilled, and then figured out where I needed to cut it to length. Then I traced the outside on the outer wall and used a Forstner bit to drill it out, drilling from the inside and the outside so it didn't blow out. I used a file to make it fit, and then fit all the pieces together. This coupling for the shop vac hose didn't actually fit, so I used a belt sander to taper down one edge so that it would fit inside the PVC. Once I had everything fitting correctly, I went back and took it apart, added some PVC cement, and glued it all together. I used a thick bead of construction adhesive around the outside of the pipe, connecting it to the tabletop, just to seal it up so no air would get lost here. Then it was time to paint the table. I covered the whole tabletop with some brown paper and used painter's tape to hold it in place. I ran a line of painter's tape along the edges getting right up to the wood, but not covering it. And I had to take it outside to my fancy paint booth. I used several light coats of paint to avoid drips and to make sure that I got even coverage in the end. And while this was drying, I found some materials to cut out the pucks. I wanted to try a few different options because I wasn't sure how well it was going to perform. I found two different types of wood and one piece of acrylic. I drew a circle with the compass and then cut them out on the bandsaw. Again, I got close to the line on the bandsaw but didn't actually try to hit it. I used the disc sander to really dial it in and get these rounded out the right way. I lightly sanded the edges of these to make sure that they would move smoothly on the surface. Then it was time to actually test it out. First I tested without any air blowing. I wanted to see what the baseline was for the movement. Not so great. I hooked up the air and turned it on and then tested them out again. One of them worked really well, but then I realized that I hadn't cleaned out the filter in my shop vac in quite a while. So I went outside, cleaned that out, and then the acrylic worked great. After that, the kids were playing air hockey all day long. And I have to say, I played quite a bit too. It's a lot of fun and works way better than I expected it to. My kids absolutely love this thing. We've already played with it a lot and I'm sure it's gonna to continue to get played with, but there is a big list of stuff that I would like to add or change about it. Luckily, most of those things can still be done without having to start over. The one that can't really be done without starting over is to change the way the plumbing runs. I wasn't really thinking ahead or planning how the plumbing would interact with the outer wall, but it would be really nice to have it flush mounted so it didn't stick out. To do that, I would have to make the side walls a little bit taller so there was enough room to drill a bigger hole so that it wouldn't be too close to the bottom. Either way, it's not a huge deal, but it would be nice just not to have that thing sticking out. But the rest of the changes can still be done at this point. One of the easiest ones to do is to change the material of the striker. There's a lot of different ways you could do that, but the simplest one would be to cut a PVC pipe into a ring and use that as the outside sleeve around here because as this wood runs into the acrylic puck, it's starting to damage this wood and take off the paint. If you're using a wooden puck, that's not really a big deal, but the acrylic one definitely is doing some damage to this and will over time. So if you add a layer of PVC around the outside, it should help that a lot, although honestly, the paint's probably still not gonna stay for very long. You could just paint them white. Another problem is just the volume of the shot Vac. It's super loud and it makes it uncomfortable for everybody else in the room who's not playing the game. Eventually I'd like to find a quieter blower, maybe one that can be mounted right underneath the table to blow right into it or just connect to the same plumbing that I have in place now. Another thing is that this acrylic puck is running into the sides which are made out of wood and so eventually it's probably going to do some damage to the sides as well. So a way around that would be to add a layer of plexiglass around the outside edge or aluminum. Originally, I did want to put a border of aluminum around the inside of it. I just kind of ran out of time and I didn't have the materials on hand, so I didn't do that. It would be super easy to add at this point and it would just keep the table in better shape longer. Now the last one is something that was a problem even when I was a kid. I remember it being an issue. When you hit the puck into the goal, it hits the back wall and bounces straight back out and then that person doesn't get their point. A way around that would be to put a strip of wood on the back side of the goal with an angle on it. So when the puck comes in, it hits that angle and deflects down into the box. So when I get some time, I'm gonna cut that little strip, put it in the back of both of the goals and that will be fixed. Obviously I didn't put any legs on this table, but you could easily add some legs if you wanted this thing to be freestanding. I don't really have the floor space to add a bunch of tables for every new game we make or anything, so I just made it so that it could set on top of our Lego table that I made in a previous video. Or if adults want to play it, you can just set it on the kitchen table. I know that there are already some questions that are being typed right now in the comments about the top with the holes on it, so let me answer a few of those. Somebody's probably going to ask, well, why didn't you use pegboard? The holes are just too big and they're not close enough together. The air would come out and it would be too slow and it probably wouldn't do a great job. Some people are also probably going to ask why the holes I did are too big. Typically, the holes on an air hockey table are very small, way smaller than what I did, and they're closer together. And if you did that, that would probably give you an even better result because the velocity of the air is going to go up as it goes through a smaller hole. 
But in this case, I thought I would try it out, and if it didn't work, I have plenty of material I could have recut a new top. In my case, it worked pretty well, and then I realized that the filter on my shop vac was full of sawdust, so I cleared it out, and then I had a lot more air blowing through there. It worked great after that. And in case you were wondering, these holes are an eighth of an inch, and they're about an inch apart in both directions. All right, that's it for this project, guys. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think about it down below in the comments or at my website, iliketomakestuff.com. Down below in the description, I've got links to all my social channels, and I would love for you to show me some stuff that you're working on. I've also got a list of all the tools that I used on this project. I've got a lot more videos for you to check out. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and subscribe to the second channel if you want to see some behind the scenes and kind of non-project stuff. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.